Hello there and welcome to my video. The other day I went to the cinema after a really long time and I was... what else? The Batman. What you need to know about me is that I am just an avid movie watcher and that I absolutely love the Dark Knight trilogy. In fact, it's my all-time favorite movie. So, when this movie was announced, I was excited, but a bit skeptical about it for a couple of reasons. First of all, Christopher Nolan's movies and Christian Bale's portrayal of Batman created, in my opinion, pretty high standards for any future Batman movie. Of course, making comparisons between films do not make justice to the new one, but, in my opinion, it is somewhat inevitable especially when it comes to such a big franchise. Secondly, I was skeptical about Robert Pattinson as Batman. I admit that I was a bit biased against him. All I really knew about him was that he is a model, that he was the protagonist in Twilight movies, and that he got exceptional reviews in the Lighthouse movie that I haven't watched yet. And yes, in an ideal world, a bad role in a horrible film should not hand an actor for his whole career. And thirdly, the movie's three-hour duration itself made me a bit horrid, in the sense that it could be needlessly long, boring, or even similar to Schneider movies, which I personally hate. I would like to note that I watched this movie only once and that I purposely avoided watching or reading any other reviews on it. In this video, I am intending to express my honest opinion on the Batman after I stepped out of the movie theater. So, my words aside, I am really glad I did go to see this movie. And here is why. The Vision from the very first scene, I was totally amazed by the visuals. The film has a unique noise type tone thanks to the color palette it was chosen. Green, dark and gloomy, with some powerful and iconic imagery, the setting is overly gothic. The photography is done by Greg Russell, with its soft and reddish colors, enhances every emotion and the times emphasis on every single moment, as well as an extra layer of depth in every scene. The visuals create a dark, creepy atmosphere that's totally in sync with the bleak, decaying world of Gotham. The directing slash cinematography. I truly appreciate the fact that Every single shot in this film was really well crafted, in the degree that I have hardly ever seen to any other superhero movie. Above all, I would like to note that Matt Reeves has given a lot of emphasis on the character of Batman in every single aspect, with dedicated and precise shots aimed at capturing every emotion that leaked out Batman's mask, as well as enhancing his gestures and all his non-verbal communication. The fight scenes and the camera work are very well crafted too, adding an exciting and cinematic action sequence to the film. Just a minor complaint though, I found some action scenes to be a bit too dark or lightless if you will, for my liking. cast slash acting on the surface as Alfred. Although Michael Caine will always be Alfred in my heart, on the surface did an excellent job as Alfred. However, I feel that he didn't have that much of screen time. Jeffrey Wright as Commissioner Gordon. Overall, I didn't like Jeffrey Wright's portrayal of Commissioner Gordon. And although I don't really have anything negative to pinpoint, 
I really think that he could have been a bit better. Maybe I would be more pleased if there were more scenes without the commission of Gordon, his uh, past, backstory, or anything like that. Zoe Kravitz as Catwoman. I believe that uh, Zoe Kravitz was a very fitting choice for the role of Catwoman. Incredibly attractive and even sexy, her gesture and look was as wild as Michelle Pfeiffer in Batman Returns. Her appearance, I truly believe that she did a very good job acting well. Colin Farrell as the Penguin. I have to admit that I did not recognize Colin Farrell, like, not at all. Penguin mask was amazing, and nevertheless, I think Colin Farrell did an exceptional job as the Penguin. I only wish uh, that he had more involvement in the second half of the movie. John Tertullo as Falcone. I believe that John Tertullo did a great job as the quite fearsome mambos and quite despicable in my opinion Falcone. I think it was uh, my favorite villain besides the Riddler. Paul Dano as the Riddler. Paul Dano in the role of the unique and disturbing Riddler is quite phenomenal. The role of Riddle itself, I think, was inspired by the Zodiac Killer, making him a um, terrifying and very disturbing villain. And finally, Robert Pattinson as Batman. I promise you, Robert Pattinson was much, much better than I ever expected. And did an excellent job as Batman. It Pattinson was home, but did not work for me. I can understand the, the closest villain and aspect, but frankly, he was emotionless. He looked like someone who is constantly depressed or that he is still grieving the loss of his parents. At some point in this movie, I was truly wondering how could then one not connect the dots between a creepy guy and the media and dedical creepy guy in a bad suit. On a low I'm pleased by the choice of actors and the acting in this film. The acting performances were great, with some good character development and the gritty of down west style, shooting the run down and corrupt begging of the street. Music Michael Giancino has crafted an amazing theme song. In certain scenes, I could feel my excitement and my adrenaline pumped just because of the theme song. Also, I have to mention the splendid soundtrack Something in the Way, written by Kurt Cobain and performed by Nirvana. I absolutely love it. The plot The film's plot is good filled with plenty of drama, mystery, and action. The plot, the dialogues, and even the humor, signed by Matt Reeves and Peter Graham, are sharply written. Just like a good detective slash mystery movie, its story is a big puzzle that its pieces come together at a very satisfying rate. Overall, the reasons were quite smart, but not that mind-blowing. Also, I really liked the pace of this film, as for the most part, it didn't feel long like at all. In the, a couple of scenes though, I felt that they were a bit slow, not boring to the least, but I felt that they could have been a little bit faster. My problem with the movie is the romance, if we can call that between Catwoman and Batman. The romance seemed too rushed and needlessly so. So I would enjoy the movie much more 
if there was normal big sparkle between the two. Moreover, I wasn't impressed by the climate change. It felt like they are not giving their best shot. Just when I thought it the beginning of an exciting final battle scene, it was apparently almost the end of the movie, resulting in an almost non-existent final battle that has been kinda hindered in the past two hours. At the end of though, the Batman is still in great and quite impressive movie that's totally worth watching. Final thoughts slash Batman character arc. In the beginning of this movie, Batman has to say, and I quote, They think I am hiding in this sandwich, watching, waiting to cry, but I am the sandwich. Batman being the sandwich of the city of Gotham, in my opinion, symbolizes the sandwich of the people, and it's a metaphor for the, the dark side of the people, the things they hide deep inside, their fears, their hopes, and their desires. And as people of Gotham evolve, change for the better, so does Batman. At the beginning, he's a vigilante, a ruthless one, which his only goal is to terrorize criminals and taking the law to his own hands, just because the system is rotten. But as the movie progresses, the people of Gotham, the whole system is shaken. People gone, people need more than a vigilante, and so does Batman himself. He realizes that he could end should protect the innocent, make normal people feel safe and secure, as well as inspire that they have someone that is there to guard the city. Batman realizes that his whole existence, his actions, and even his own legacy should be maximized. He could be a legend. Thanks for watching.